uh, the second Ready, Set, Go introduction video for Unit 2. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for watching these. Thanks for caring about your grade. That's so cool. I'm very proud of you. In problems one through four, we're looking to find the slope in each representation. It's already been sketched out for some of these. Our job is to finish finding the slopes and show whether or not the slopes are the same for the pairs of representations provided. So since we're dealing with the graph, this is a straight callback of what we saw in unit one using rise, using run. So let's sketch it out. This is a run of one, two, three, four. Since we went from left to right, it's a run of positive four. Now we're moving on up with a rise. I didn't even count how many, what, what was it, seven? So our rise in this case is positive seven. So when it's all said and done, we're always taking our rise over our run. So we'll just hold on to our slope of seven fourths for now. If we pop back to this one on the right, looks as if our units are still in units of one. So this ran one, this ran so far away. It gave us one, not much else to say. That was a flock of seagulls reference. Pretty good, right? Um, but eventually we see that our rise is just two. Our run was just one. This definitely doesn't match the other slope. So unfortunately, these slopes are not the same. So when it's all said and done, we can say that no, the slopes are not the same in each. Seven fourths, although close to two, it's a quarter off. Um, seven fourths isn't equal to two, so they're not equal. Pretty simple to spot. Uh, we deal with a nice little table here. So let's look at this. We can get a hold of the slope from the table if we measure our differences or our changes in f of x and then the change in x. So from three to five, that's just adding two. From negative 19 to negative 11, that's adding back eight. So our slope in this case, is just eight over two. The actor formerly known as quattro over here from one to two, that's just adding one, negative 27 to negative 23. What's that doing? It's just adding back four. Four over one is the TikTok superstar. Four is the slope the same in each? Yeah. Four equals four. Last I checked. If you say something different, let me know. Uh, but the other two problems, uh, yeah, let's talk about them. So for some reason, they're really just being abstract on saying what y is equal to. Remember that if we're in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, our slope is in front of x. Um, although here we don't have y isolated, we definitely can. If we divide all of this by two, getting us y equals, well, negative six divided by negative two, it's just three. X is along for the ride. Two divided by negative two is just negative one. Over here, y is already isolated. So our slope is pretty easy to spot as just three. And it's three here. Wow, they're the same. Is the slope the same in each? Yes, sir. I'll leave the fourth one for you. See you in the set. In the set, problem five through 10, we're creating a graphical model based on the context. Indicate if the relationship is linear or exponential. Remember, it's linear if it's a straight line. Keyword here is line. Exponential if it's a curve going up and to the right. Uh, and if the context is best modeled as discrete or continuous, recall discrete, shh, it's just a dot and it's a bunch of them. Where it's continuous, it's just continuing on, just cruising if it's continuous. So the freeway construction crew pours 300 feet of concrete in a day. Okay, well, it's probably going to be a pretty consistent amount that starts small maybe at one foot and then two foot and three foot and maybe some fractions of a foot in there. So as time goes on, it's eventually going to be all done and it's going to be pretty consistent with how they work. Um, I'm going to say that this is continuous 
because we can have fractions of a foot. And I'm going to say that this is linear unless they start drinking Red Bull or Monster or a uh, five hour energy. I think they're going to be working at the same pace, the construction crew. So I think that's all I have to say about that. For six, every hour that passes, the amount of area infected by the bacteria doubles. So let's imagine the bacteria starts out pretty small and over time, and then we'll have this measure of bacteria. I should have done this on the other one, but it's okay. Um, it's gonna double. So it's gonna start out pretty chill and then it's just gonna kick up real quick. And we can have fractions of this, so it's definitely continuous and it's going in an exponential fashion. There you go. Hopefully you can knock out the other two. We'll take a look at 11 through 13. Rap uh, yeah, representation is provided, like they rapped about it. A representation is provided. We're stating whether the context is discrete or continuous. Identify it if it is linear, arithmetic, or exponential, geometric. I use quotes because we have seen linear and exponential more recently, but arithmetic and geometric, we've been dealing with that since unit one. So they're kind of nicknames, handles, if you will. Uh, let's look at 11. What's going on here? We have the first term in our sequence. I'll draw a little table for this. Why not? I'm allowed to. In our table, the first term is five. What's this saying right here? What do you think? Our old buddies f of n and f of n minus one. What's being said there? Hopefully you're saying that as we move forward, we're taking the previous. And we're just adding three to it. So we could just keep this going all day. Second term would be eight. Third term would be 11. Um, so this is definitely moving in a linear fashion because it just keeps adding over and over. And it, we're missing fractions, unfortunately. So this would actually be discrete. Discrete. Because we don't have fractions, we don't have 5.5 or 6.5. We're skipping a lot, honestly, between 5 and 8, and then 8 and 11. So for 11, it's those two. Uh, here, I see it's a curve. So, well, I noticed that there's just points, so it's definitely discrete. This is a great example of a discrete function. And I know it's curving. It's not a consistent change. So this is exponential. If you said geometric, kudos to you. It'd probably be multiplying by some fraction, but we now kind of use the word exponential to talk about that. Here, starting with seven, you keep multiplying by two over and over. X could be fractions. It could be whole numbers. It could be negative numbers. So that would be continuous. And since it's multiplying over and over, starting with seven, you keep multiplying by two over and over, getting you 48 and then kicking you up even higher than I care to write. So continuous, and it's also growing in an exponential fashion. Fashion, turn to the left, fashion, turn to the right. Continuous and exponential. See you in the go. All right, so 15, 16, and 17, you've done problems like that before. Just think opposites with this. Think reciprocals. Flip that fraction upside down and multiply. Same here. Flip the fraction upside down and multiply. You can do it. I uh, will talk at length about problem 14, though. So this is the first time I think we're seeing a two-step equation. It's nothing we can't handle, though. A quick way to help us is SADMAP. This may look like PEMDAS. However, 
it's kind of the way that we should approach problems like this, where most likely our first step is going to deal with subtraction or addition, and then we kick into multiplication or division. So we're trying to isolate X. We see 16 and it's positive. How could we undo that? What you saying? We could deduct 16 from both sides. That'd be a good move. We're now just left with one X. This is done. 36 minus 16 is just 20. And do we really have to divide here? Do we really have to divide? Won't hurt. It's a good habit to get into, even though it's just one X. You could have just left it, but 20 divided by one is just 20, leaving X as our answer. Capiche? Sound good. So sad map, a good way to approach two-step equations where there's an X term and some other constant. Um, if you have any questions on anything you saw here in the video, please let me know, reach out, say something. Talk to you soon.